Hello, and welcome to our online and television service for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. My name is Reverend Jillian Hoyer, and I am one of the associate incumbents here in the Parish of the Valley. I'm pleased to be leading our service of Holy Eucharist this morning, as well as preaching. Our incumbent, Bishop Michael Bird, had planned to be with us today to share a sermon. However, today instead, he is at the funeral of Bishop Tom Corson, the retired Bishop of Moosonee. And so we send our prayers to Bishop Tom's family and friends today. I am joined by one of our lay readers, Lorna Sibley, who is reading the lessons and leading us in the prayers of the people. Our organist is Paula Lundrigan, and Reverend Matthew Brown is on the technical control panel today, recording this service live for you to be aired on, on Sunday. As many of you will have heard by now, our church buildings are reopening for in-person worship on the day that this service is being aired, Sunday, February 6th. And so this will be our last pre-recorded service. Beginning next Sunday, you will be able to watch either a service live, live streamed here from Holy Trinity on YouTube at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, or you'll be able to watch the service with a one-week delay online or on your TV, as has been our custom throughout the pandemic. Regardless of when and where you are joining us for worship today, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us in prayer. And as we come before God, I invite us to ready our hearts as we join in our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Our service continues on page 185 of the Green Book of Alternative Services. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we are attentive to the word of God in Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Our psalm for today is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart, before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear the words of the Holy Gospel, our gradual hymn is the Church of Christ in Every Age. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. 
when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. In the year that King Uzziah died. The year that King Uzziah died was clearly a pivotal year. Enough so that just saying the phrase would bring back everyone's memories right to that time and place. Kind of like saying, in the year that JFK was assassinated, in the year that the planes crashed into the Twin Towers. In the second year of the pandemic. Or more personally, maybe it's something more like, in the year that my mother died. In the year that I first had that cancer diagnosis. In fact, the year that King Uzziah died was a pivotal year. By most accounts, King Uzziah was one of the best kings in the history of the kingdom of Judah. King for 52 years, the country prospered and was close to God for most of that time. But towards the end of his reign, something happened that broke his relationship with God, and the king died in disgrace, with his son having all but taken over the day-to-day -day ruling of the kingdom. And so, the year that King Uzziah died was a time of turmoil. It was a time when the people of Judah keenly felt the absence of God. They had a hard time knowing God was with them. And they were unsure if God cared about them and their fellow citizens. They wondered if God was gone. And then the prophet Isaiah comes on the scene. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. What a statement. In this time of mourning and a keenly felt absence, God procl Isaiah proclaims that he has seen God. And what a vision of God that he sees. The majestic and powerful God on a throne, surrounded with the mighty angel hosts calling out, Holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of the glory of God. In this time of absence and pain, I saw the Lord. In this season after Epiphany, when Little by little, the veil is pulled back and the glory of God is revealed to us 
through the prophets and through the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, we might ask ourselves, where have we seen the Lord? Amongst the pivotal moment that is this time in our life, in the second year of the pandemic, in the midst of loneliness, of shutdowns, in the midst of the absence of friends and family members, in the midst of unresolved grief, in the second or third online or mail-in vestry that our church has had, in a year of transition and change in the parish with an upcoming retirement and a maternity leave, can we say, I saw the Lord? Do we trust in a God who desires to meet us? Do we dare to believe in a God who might actually show up in our lives? Do we accept this invitation to ask and seek and trust and anticipate that God is here? Over and over throughout Scripture, we see stories of encounter. Stories where God appears, God speaks, God reveals, and God hears. And then lives are changed. Trajectories are reversed. And people find peace. Think of our gospel reading today. The fishermen have been fishing all night long with no luck and nothing to show for their hours and hours of labor. Jesus comes alongside them and tells them to try again. And soon, the abundance of God is poured out on them with an overwhelming catch of fish. Now, the presence of God might not always look like hosts of winged angels surrounding God on a throne with a robe that fills the skies while earthquakes thunder and smoke pours out around us. Or like nets that break and boats that sink from an overabundant catch of fish. It might look more like what Isaiah encounters in the verses that follow his eager, here I am, send me, where it suggests that Isaiah's calling is to proclaim the presence of God to people who aren't listening until the cities lie waste, the houses are empty, and the land is desolate. Not the ideal job, but perhaps a realistic one. God isn't promising Isaiah a return to the glory days of Israel and Judah. Just like God doesn't promise us a return to the glory days of Sunday school classrooms of 50 kids, packed pews every Sunday, and some sort of ministry or meeting happening every night of the week. No. Instead, God is calling Isaiah to speak into his time of absence and transition and remind his people that God is there. That whether or not they see God, God is there. That in pain and uncertainty, God is there to remind them that God is enough. As we walk through this time of transition as a parish, as we enter the third year of this pandemic, as we sometimes wonder if God is still with us, I pray that we would know the insight 
and the certainty of Isaiah, who in the midst of turmoil and absence saw the Lord and answered the call to go and be. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to assume a posture for prayer. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Hear our prayer. Today we pray for the church in the world, the Church of Ireland, And in our companion diocese of Jerusalem, we pray for Christ Church Nazareth. In Canada, we pray for Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, and for Mark, our national indigenous archbishop. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocese of Ottawa, we pray for Shane, our diocesan bishop for Michael, Honorary Assistant Bishop, and our incumbent, and for Matthew, Susan, and Gillian, our associate incumbents. In the deanery of Pembroke, we pray for St. Clement's Chapel, Clontarf, in our parish of the valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, as she marks the 70th anniversary of her father's passing, February 6, 1952, and her accession to the throne in this, her platinum jubilee year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life and members of our parish of the Valley community, 
We pray this week for Barbara Childerhoes, David and Carol Clark, Nancy Clark, Andrew Clark, Sabrina, Sarah, and Molly Clark, Sharon and Ken Clark, and all members of their families. We also pray for the sick and those who have asked for our prayers as listed in this week's bulletin. We pray for those we hold in our hearts and those who are known only to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and for all members of their families as they grieve. We remember especially Herbert Metzger and Bob McCauley. May you surround their families and friends with your love and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who are living with the threat of violence and terrorism throughout the world and especially Ukraine. For all in danger, we pray that they may be relieved and protected. In the midst of such upheaval, we pray that a spirit of gentleness and respect would prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are ever thankful for our many blessings and for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. As the table is prepared for communion, our offertory hymn today is Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him who is our peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we continue with Eucharistic prayer number two, found on page 196. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people, he chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, 
whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all telling. May we who have shared in this heavenly banquet be instruments in your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding. 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn this day is Stand Up and Bless the Lord. <laughs>